Podcast Network. Welcome to the GamerCast Network Video Game Show for Sunday, March 29th, 2009. This is episode 135. I'm Chad, and this week for the roll call, a modified question from Harry. We changed it around a bit. What video game box art does not do the game justice? And joining us this evening is Chris. My vote is Double Dragon 2 The Revenge for the Atari ST. It looks like a fourth grader drew it in his math class on his back of his notebook. And also joining us is Ivan. Mega Man 1 and 2 both have just god-awful, freaky, weird, bad box art. It's all just... Uh, bad. It's all bad. Yeah, it's bad, but it's also kind of like, the way it's drawn, it's just kind of creepy. Uh, good old Mega Man. And that game is one of the best games for Nintendo ever. And that's what they came up with <laughs> for the cover art. And also joining us is Tom. It's not like super funny, but like way back in the day, like in the late '80s, all the PC games had just really bad box art, no matter what it was. And so I just try to pick one, and I picked the King's Quest one because it's a guy in tights presenting oh, a gift to Santa Claus. Yeah, <laughs> those were really awful. <laughs> How do you like my package there, Santa? Those are good times, though. Good times. Good times. And also joining us is Keith. I have to go with Wizardry and Crusaders of the Dark Savant for the PC. It was it was pretty bad. <laughs> Wow. I'm not quite sure what wow, its selling point dude. was, but uh, it was an awesome game, but uh, yeah. I just love the title, Crusaders of the Dark Savant. It's just so stereotypical. I have no creativity. Let me just make a name up. It just sounds like it's about like evil retards. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, I have the phone mic memorized, yeah. And next on the list is Phil. Okay, I got two for two different reasons. Unreal Tournament 2004. It's got like an alien and a soldier and a jeep in the background, and it kind of really doesn't give you the feel of how awesome the game is. And then the other one I got here is uh, Battlefield 2. It's just a big number two with the word Battlefield across the front with a soldier standing there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here's the deal. We spent all of our budget on the multiplayer, so we've got a buck thirty-five for the box art. So, yeah, it's just going to say Battlefield and then to differentiate between the first and the second one, it's going to have a number two. And finally joining us is Bob. I picked Xenophobe for the Atari 7800 because I loved that game and it has some of the crustiest, I drew this on a notebook, art. The alien's eyes are both pointing in the same direction, which doesn't make any sense when I say it, but when you look at the picture, you'll be like, oh god, that's retarded. <laughs> and the extra, extra bad part about that is that the one for the 2600 had much, much better art. Even though it was a worse game. Even though it was a worse game, so yeah. So Aquaman and Aqualad versus the happy alien face on Xenophobe. Oh, gets my vote. <laughs> I'm gonna get you! I'm gonna get you! <laughs> the only one I could think of actually came across when it actually was a decent game, but the box art's kind of, I don't know, doesn't impress me as Quest for Glory 3. It's kind of weak. The name doesn't impress me. <laughs> the Quest for Glory series is always fun, but the box art, eh, did you get that link? Okay. Oh, God. Wages of War. Flaming Sword. <laughs> you know what? All the monsters, I mean, that guy wouldn't stand a chance against any of those monsters in the background. They would laugh and leave. Like the one guy in the top right, his eyes are falling out. He's so unimpressed. <laughs> <laughs> I can't look directly at his pants. This week on the GamerCast Network. Pontoid will be watching the 1994 Street Fighter live-action movie and providing color commentary. Buy, rent, or not download copies of the Jean-Claude Van Damme classic now or you'll be out of the loop. Jim faces mutiny aboard the Demetrius when he expresses his intent in cooperating with the Cylon Wardrox, who has boarded the ship to help him find Lauren, only on Destructoid's Podcastle. On the Sarcastic Gamer PlayStation Podcast are the PSN's bandwidth fees a bunch of BS and Noby Noby Boy. It's cheaper than peyote with the same effect. On Gamer Tag Radio episode 187, the staff interviews developers of Starbreeze Studios about the Chronicles of Riddick Assault on Dark Athena, coming out for the Xbox 360 and PS3. On Podtacular, the crew dives into the dusty voicemail box while the site undergoes the big move. When will we come out of the dark? Only the Guardians know. Discover the community that brings you all these great podcasts and more. GamerCastNetwork.com Next Topic 
So, Chris, you were at the Game Developers Conference. I was. Did you see anything fun? I got to see on live video streaming service. So the idea of it is so you don't have to purchase a ton of consoles and a ton of games. You get this little box when you plug it into your internet connection and you can stream the games and buy them and everything online. The games are actually stored on servers at data centers. When you say you want to move your character up, it sends that control to the data center, moves the character up, and then streams the video back to you. It was really cool. I played uh, Mirror's Edge and Grid, and the response was actually pretty good. I mean, I noticed a small bit of video lag. Yeah, the servers were behind the curtain. When I was reading the article on this, it mentioned something about not only do you have to live close to one of these data centers, but to get full HD quality, you have to have like five megabit per second. Yeah, yeah I mean, some ridiculously high amount of bandwidth that nobody has yet. <laughs> five megabit is required for... HD video. I think all you need for standard def is a 1.5 megabit connection, which most people have. The data centers are the ones that were at the show were about 50 miles away in, I think, Santa Clara, maybe. Supposedly, they have huge, uh, <laughs> big, fat internet pipe. Yeah, I was I tried to change where I was going with it, but I couldn't. They have fat pipes going into their booth. With this one, you'll need to live, I think they said 60 miles. So wherever the data centers are located, you'll need to live within 60 miles of it. 60 miles. That's it. That Which means you have to be in a suburb of a major metropolitan city, which means even if you live in Manaway, you're not going to get it. <laughs> it was a really clever idea. I mean, I like it in concept. I just don't think it's going to be something that you're going to want to purchase for at least five years. Yeah, they didn't say when it was going to be out. They said that they were going to have a closed beta soonish. I assume that means this year, but I'm not positive. But God, how awesome would that be? You'd never have to install anything again. Everything would just kind of live in the ether. It'd be like Steam++. Plus Plus. Um, yeah, I can't say I'm overly impressed but you know we'll see i'm not saying it's a bad idea i'm just saying i'll believe it when it when it's available these kind of things are coming down the pipe because people are still getting used to it with like the ruku box from amazon which is basically like a netflix client and the same thing with the netflix client in the 360 people are starting to get used to it for video content so i could see there being some kind of demand on the line but kids who are used to playing on the 360 now man i think they're going to be adverse to performance hit so if they're having performance issues with this thing, it's just not going to be successful. Yeah. It, I mean, I don't want any performance at all, but I think for people... You don't want any performance? I have a box, an empty box I could sell you. It has no performance whatsoever. It's the Imagine console. I think to try and get into PC games, it's a big pain in the butt, and you start getting nervous about hardware and $800 video cards that you got to replace every three years. For 150 bucks or whatever this thing will end up being, and then the cost of games, because I think you also have to purchase the games, it's a good way to get somebody to buy Crisis that normally wouldn't have ever played it before. I was going to start shooting some holes, because I didn't hear anybody actually saying anything negative, really. So I've got between 4 and 5 meg connection down now and last time i tried to watch a netflix video i got interrupted about 10 times saying my connection slowed down and eventually it got to a point where it looked like i was watching the movie underwater it was so blurry and i understand that you know we may not have the connection speed now and in five years it may get better but time warner cable is absolute and what happens if you somehow lose your network connection now you have no ability whatsoever to play games because I'm assuming this means you have to be, well, you do, you have to be online all the time, which means any downtime whatsoever, you're not playing any video games, period. On the plus side, you're only 60 miles away, so you could just drive to the headquarters and play there. <laughs> well, that's the other thing, is if you have to be within 60 miles of these data centers, you either need to live in a fairly populous area, or they're going to have to have literally just hundreds of thousands of data centers. For God's sake, with a cell phone, they have cell phone towers like every four feet and you still drop connection. I, 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 60 miles is not that far. In the Cleveland area, most people live like 15 to 30 miles away from downtown Cleveland. Yeah, but I have a feeling that it won't be in, it wouldn't be set up like in downtown Cleveland. Well, no, it wouldn't, but that's my point is so if you do live in Manaway, you are hosed because within. 60 miles of man away, where are you going to put one of these things? And oddly enough, 30 miles generally isn't far enough away for most people from downtown Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little too close to downtown Cleveland. In Seattle, 3,500 miles away. Next topic. Not to mention the fact that video games are expensive, and when you're paying this much for video games, it's nice to know that, you know, you have something. 
and having a hundred percent of the things that you're buying stored off site where you will never see them, never touch them, never be able to do anything with them. Not to mention you spend say <laughs> what? I'm just picturing you like at night crawling into bed with all your games <laughs> and just like snuggling with them all and rubbing your face into them and I know exactly what you're saying because I, I was thinking the exact same thing where hey, this is going to be subscription based and the huge issue there is okay I don't feel like paying this subscription anymore. I now have zero games. Whereas with the console, I bought my game, it's mine until I decide to get rid of it. I want to own it. I'm with you. Even though I'm not going to sleep with it, I, I want to own it. Yeah. And I'm tired of the stacking monthly fees for things, too. I've got your internet access, which is X dollars a month. You have Xbox Live, which is X dollars a month. You have World of Warcraft, which is X dollars a month. Netflix, which is X dollars a month. Now you're going to have this thing. Too many bills per month for this kind of entertainment stuff. Not to mention, I'm going to be real pissed when they make you pay $20 a month for the service, $150 for the tiny little console, and then $60 per game that once you cancel your service, you still won't own. I, I don't think this is a good idea. I don't want it to get to the point where you own nothing and you're just giving people money. Which is just the opposite, because that's I'm sure that's exactly what the businesses want. Of course it is, because they're just getting money and they don't have to supply any product. It's just, okay, here's the game, and as long as you're paying us, you can play it, but as soon as you stop paying us, it now will go away. I don't ever want to see it get there. How is that any different from all the online subscription fees you pay now for Warcraft or something else? I mean, don't, aren't we essentially at that point anyway? Only for the MMO-type games, which isn't the only game I play. Yeah, but a company like this saves money in, in not having to distribute a piece of plastic to people. But the publishers aren't going to care about that. And the publishers aren't going to say, oh, just because it's easier for you to deliver, we're going to charge less. They're still going to charge you $50, $60 a month for a game. They charge the same prices on Steam for games. Yeah, they're going to charge you a monthly fee for the service. They're going to charge you for the console. And the publishers are going to want money for the game. The publishers aren't going to agree to this company saying, we're going to charge, say, $40 a month and the customer doesn't have to pay anything for games. They can play whatever games they want, whenever they want, as often as they want. The publishers are going to say, screw that. You charge them $20 a month, and we charge them $40, $50, $60 for each game they want. And my whole point is you're doing that, and you're left with nothing afterwards, which Steam is similar. I was going to ask, Keith, you don't own anything with Steam. You own the game, but you have no box. You have no media. I know that. You have a problem with that? Not currently, but I probably would eventually. Yeah, what happens when they just like, all right, well, you know what? Uh, Steam is no longer a service, or hey, we're going to have to start charging 20 bucks a month for this. At that point, see, because I still have all my Steam purchase stuff, I would contact the game publisher and say, all right, where's my copy of the game? Well, well hang on. Now, Steam has said that they've made this statement. I don't know if they're going to hold to it now. If Steam should ever go out of business, they will release a patch for the games that will unlock them. So... They don't have to authenticate with the Steam servers. And, and that's the thing, is I trust Steam to not hose me in that way. And if they did, I would be going to somebody and complaining. I mean, I don't know exactly what I would do at that point. But there would be a brick in a pickup truck involved. <laughs> <laughs> but Keith has a good point, too. And I might do that at some point, is if Steam goes out of business, you've paid 50 or $60 for Left for Dead, which is the same as if you walked into a Best Buy and bought it. I would absolutely, con well, unfortunately, Left 4 Dead is Valve, so if Steam goes out of business, Valve might be right behind it. But in theory. An example such as that, you're paying the same amount as the actual disc anyway, so I, I would certainly contact the publisher and say, this company went out of business. I paid $60 for this game. I, I want a copy of this game now, please. Thank you. <laughs> well, my pickup's going to be there, and you're going to be pissed to break. <laughs> That's how we roll. Next topic. Chris, did you see anything else fun there at GDC? Game-wise, anything? Game-wise, no. There wasn't a lot. Um, I mean, nothing stands out. GDC is less about game announcements. And I think, especially with this year's E3, supposedly going back to the old ways where people are holding off their announcements for E3 and not wanting to waste them at GDC. Were there a lot of people there looking for jobs? A lot of HUD hunters? Yeah. I mean, that was sort of the reason for GDC to begin with was 
networking and recruiting. There was all kinds of companies doing that. There was a whole careers expo. So the expo hall is split up into two different big giant rooms. One of them is... For those of you with a job, for those of you without a job. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a job, please come in here and purchase a game. If you don't have a job, please come in here, get a job, then go across the hall and purchase a game. <laughs> Looking over the list, I think Nintendo had some stuff. There was a game, I think, with rock climbing or something with the balance board. Oh, rock and roll rock climber. And it is what you think it is. It uses the Wii balance board and you climb rocks by wiggling around. And then eventually your virtual on-screen avatar pulls a guitar out of nowhere and starts jamming. What does that box art look like? I can ask the real question. <laughs> Nintendo was very underwhelming. Oh, wait, where's the, wasn't there a uh, Zelda game on a train? Zelda on a train. <laughs> Throw Zelda <laughs> from a train. Starring Link. Oh, I played Punch-Out. Pretty much just how you remember it with a little slightly better graphics. So you hold the nunchuck in your two hands and when you want to punch you punch with your physical hand and the remote when you want to uppercut you push up on the left thumbstick and punch so that says to me gimmick hacked in at the last minute i would rather just sit on the couch and play i didn't think that the motion controls added anything at least in my opinion they didn't do like a real uppercut no to do an uppercut you push up on the left stick and then punch that's retarded yeah did they have the balance board there so you could do the balance board too because that's like the uh dodging left and right my brain doesn't see stupid things so i didn't see it that mirror must be really confusing <laughs> <laughs> correct i'm like a vampire <laughs> but i'm <t> <laughs> just sees his clothes <laughs> next topic were there any good developer parties at gdc i went to rock band uh which was really good Ooh, did you play rock band i didn't it was a way crowded rock band party oh, that would be really lame you don't play rock band at the rock band party let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> they uh, announced their new song is coming. It's the Journey song. Um, oh, what the heck is it? Uh, it starts with the piano. That song. Don't Stop Believing. Don't Stop Believing. Thank you. Yes. How the <laughs> did that? I didn't even know yeah. what you were doing. Dude, that was <laughs> awful. You literally went like this. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what the hell? No, I remember NC telling me that song was coming out soon. Is anyone else just kind of sick of Rock Band? Yes. I don't even own it, and I'm kind of, I'm sick of it. Oh my god, am I sick of Rock Band. Rock Band? You're sick of why? You don't live in an apartment. I live in an apartment. It's the second unit where you hear neighbors playing Rock Band all the time. Any, you go into any, like, you go into Best Buy, you go into any of the, there's always, like, the four kids sit, well, yeah, of course there's only four, there's only four instruments, but still, there's the four jackasses that are sitting there singing Rock Band in the middle of Best Buy. Then you leave and go somewhere else, and every, just, there's Rock Band everywhere. I'm Rock Banded out. I grow weary of it, that's all. I don't even own it. I'm just sick of always seeing it, hearing about it. Well, wait till the Beatles one comes out, then you'll see about and hear it more. As long as there's an assassination level where I could shoot John Lennon. And then you sing the Cranberry song. Oh, I just shot John Lennon. Oh, 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 oh. My God, your memory is so... That's what you remember. <laughs> That's the you remember. You can't remember what you saw in the GDC, but you can remember <laughs> Cranberry songs with lyrics about shooting John Lennon off the top of your head. That's brilliant, let me tell you. I don't know, my mind doesn't see stupid things, but it hears plenty of stupid things. <laughs> it hears many, many stupid things. I hear stupid things. I don't see them, but I hear them. Next topic. I went to the Sony blog thing. They had a Sony blog meetup. I went there. You sound really thrilled about that. Was that fun? No, it was good. It was fun. We hung out and played Fat Princess, which is going to be awesome. So Fat Princess is, I want to say it's up to 16 v 16 multiplayer, and it's kind of got different classes. So it's cartoony. So think Castle Crashers plus Capture the Flag. Are you capturing a fat chick instead of a flag? Yeah, you're capturing a fat princess. So you have the blue team's princess in a cage and you run out to the battlefield and you can fight the enemies or you can get wood to feed to your... <laughs> you, you got wood from the fat princess. <laughs> There's a machine, I don't know what it does because no one was around. <laughs> you put wood in this thing and it upgrades something. And the idea is you feed this princess food. So you're throwing cake into the cage. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and as she gets fatter, when the enemies come to save her, she's all big and fat and sloppy and slow. So she can't go very fast. God, it's like night out at the Garfield Heights corner bar. <laughs> <laughs> Lure them with food, but it's going to take a while. You're going to be my fat princess. Here's some cake. Yeah, but it's not going to be very long until like... 
I don't know. I'm sure there's some acronym for the association of fat people, and they start complaining about the game or something. And this is a uh, PS3 game? PS3, uh, PSN exclusive, I think. And it looks like it'd be crazy, because it's literally, I want to say 16 on 16. And it's, you know, so one guy's an archer, one guy's a warrior. You put on the priest hat, and you can cure people. It looks pretty amazingly, surprisingly deep. I've looked at fat women and said surprisingly the same thing, Chris. <laughs> you think it would be fun, but it turns out not so much. No, no, no. They, they look amazingly deep. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, okay, that's a good place. Right if there. you throw flour on them first to find the well, moist oh, spot. Oh, I knew that was coming. It oh, was just I a never oh. liked that joke. <laughs> what? See, now I'm just thinking of the story that, Bob, you told me. No, 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 it's in my head. That. <laughs> it's in my head. It's in my head. You won't get uh, out. Just lift it up. Just lift it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else is confused, but I don't care. My mind is scarred again. Can we talk about other things now? Next topic. Mailbag. Do it in a fat princess voice. It's the mailbag. It's the mailbag right here. Now give me a hot pocket. That's pretty good. <laughs> Suddenly it's become meet the clumps. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's me, your old friend, Team Fortress 2. Just wondering why. Uh, you guys still haven't played me at all. I mean, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of cold and lonely over here. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna say somebody paraphrase that for me. I got okay. I get it. Okay. Yeah, you're doing Ivan's voice. All right. That's fine. Okay. Whatever. So somebody spliced all of Ivan's Team Fortress voices together. Pretty good voice though, right? They did a, they did a really good job. They didn't, you know, spend too. I thought they used you. Yeah, I thought they just kind of put your voice together. Otherwise, they sound like you a lot. There's a good reason why they sound like me. Wait a minute, you probably sent that voicemail. <laughs> I've been sent a voicemail, and none of us listened to it. He's like, you ruined my joke. I thought it would be funny, you idiots, because it was Team Fortress calling you. And I wasted five minutes of my life making this thing for you. Yeah, pretty much. And none of y'all listened to it. I won't ever do that again. Yep, that, that too. <laughs> <laughs> Next topic. Uh, okay, we have one guy who asks our three favorite games. Diablo 2. World of Warcraft. And Chad's mom. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not without the bonus DLC. The original just the re it didn't have a lot of replay value to it. Okay, since you've already gone down this topic, let me at least read a mail message then. Here we go. Hey crew, this is Bama Rebel Gamer from the forum. First off, as being my first sent message to the mailbag, thanks to you guys, every time anything goes wrong in my life, I bow my head and sigh as I give myself a shared dream pie. Jesus. <laughs> Dude, we don't even do that. <laughs> Pull yourself together, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Please don't tell the cops that when you're shooting up your school. Thank you. <sighs> but back to the real point, lately I've had trouble finding interest in games. I have played every game I own twice over. So if each of you could give your all-time three favorite games, what would they be? What system? He doesn't give a system here, so let's assume all systems. No, no, give him arcade games so that when he's angry and sad, he has to spend... <laughs> 25 cents every time he wants to play it. <laughs> 25 cents is the last time you were at arcade. <laughs> Kadash on the arcade and Gauntlet 1. You can only stay alive for five minutes. Gauntlet 1 was good, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Four-player Gauntlet 1. Because they had several machines. Like, they had one that only had two sticks. Uh, the X-Men. The X-Men. Heather, what's uh, your favorite game of all time? Fighting game. Or you could just talk to your wife instead of the people on the show. <laughs> I think it was just called X-Men. <laughs> How there's a Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, the, the X-Men with the, what was it, six or eight players, and it had two screens, one of which was actually reversed off of a mirror or something. Remember that motion capture game? I think it was motion capture Mortal Kombat that they had in, um, what's that place downtown? Was that what it was, Chris? There was a game where you stood in, like, around green screens, and then it captured your punches and kicks. Oh, that thing sucked. It did suck. I mean, that was an awesome game, dude. You should play that one. <laughs> it was like a dollar, too. It was totally worth it. Remember that one that they had in Cedar Point where it had the cowboy and holograms? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's number two. That was my second favorite game ever. What was that game? Uh, Time something. Time Cowboy. Time. <laughs> Time Traveler. Time Traveler. Time Traveler. Was it one of those games where it really wasn't a game, you were just kind of picking the direction that the story moved in? No, it was an awesome game, and you should go play it. And then Crypt of Medea was... Yeah. <laughs> also great. So, three arcade games then, huh? 
Dude, anyone that listens to the show can pretty much rattle off three games that we like. Diablo, Warcraft, and... Uh, Raven Shield. But consoles. Console games, because those all three you just mentioned were PC games. Well, too f- bad. He should have specified. <laughs> And that was Video Game Show episode number 135 for Sunday, March 29th, 2009. Any ham sandwiches or shattered dream pies to give to the world peoples? Shattered dream pie to Missouri. I didn't win my tournament. <laughs> oh yeah, there's basketball games going on. Uh, shattered dream pie to basketball for not being more fun to watch partake in. Careful, you might have some kid from England yelling about football soon enough. <laughs> to how long this episode is taking. This is quick. What is she complaining about? What are you complaining about, Heather? I'm going to say shatter dream pie to static cling for ruining laundry. What? Why isn't Jill doing your laundry for you? Because it's my laundry. We all don't have a Heathers that we're married to, Chris. They wipe the cup after each sip. <laughs> like a priest in church on Sunday. <laughs> exactly. Like a priest. <laughs> what happened with your Hong laundry? Kong, Chad. I mean, what? What'd you say there? No, apparently we're not done talking about laundry. I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, he made a comment that his laundry's all f***ed up, and then he just stops. I didn't realize there was supposed to be a full detailed description of why it sucks. How, well, how does static cling ruin your laundry? It doesn't, like, tear it? I was just trying to be funny. I threw something out there. Ah, okay. Obviously, I failed. It makes it all stick together. My socks are all over my sweaters. Now all my sweaters look like Heathcliff Huxtable because I got socks pasted all over them. All I said was, have a good time in Hong Kong there, Chad. Thank you. Are we giving ham sandwiches? Can I give a ham sandwich? Where the f*** have you been for the last 20 minutes? Yeah! Oh, I was going to give God. one to NVIDIA because they started releasing uh, drivers for notebooks, something that they weren't doing previously. So if you had a notebook from like Asus, you were never able to get driver updates because as soon as they release the notebook, they never support it. That's a good one. This week for the GamerCast Network Gaming Nights, they're playing Gears of War 2 on the Xbox 360. Go to the GamerCast Network forums at GamerCastNetwork.com slash forums for all the details. And as usual, send your comments, questions, queries, concerns, or roll call question to the mailbag at mailbag at videogameshow.org, Skype us at Video Game Show, or call us at 320-300-GAME. That is a standard long-distance call, and all normal fees apply. And that's a wrap. Good night. I kind of like the new Skype. Hmm. Is it good? It's easier to tell things. It makes more sense. Okay, Phil is apparently back. Oh, yes. Okay, we're... Oh, no. Okay, I'm, I'm getting them right now. How come I can't add him... Wait, how come I can't add him to the call? Oh, there it is. Jesus, I see it now. No, that's, that's adding to the conversation. F- Skype. You were just saying five seconds ago how you were <laughs> liking it. I got it now. There we go. I see it now. Here we go. Oh, this is a very good version of Skype. I really liked it. F- I can't add someone to the call! <laughs>